we keep things rolling here on the Sports Cubicle, I'm your host, Mike Mercado, and it has been a very emotional, a very roller coaster weekend for Chicago Bears fans as it has been made official, as the moment has come, the Chicago Bears have traded Justin Fields to the Pittsburgh Steelers for a six-round conditional pick in the 2025 NFL Draft that can become a fourth-round pick depending on incentives and things that happen on playing time and stats and all that nonsense that happens in the NFL. But long story short, Justin Fields is no longer a Chicago Bear. He is now a Pittsburgh Steeler. He is now being second-string QB behind Russell Wilson, maybe? Probably not. Probably going to outshine Russ sooner than later and become the starter for Pittsburgh. And more importantly, under the tutelage of Mike Tomlin, one of the best head coaches in the National Football League. So that ended up, I think, playing out pretty well for Justin. For the Bears, I don't know about a six-round pick, a what that could become a fourth-round pick. I think it really goes to show the market that was out there for Justin Fields, what a lot of people would say and would put as a quote. But when push came to shove, what they were willing to actually give up. and no doubt about what Kirk Cousins signing and and going to Atlanta, how that impacted what was going on with Chicago. And you know, we've heard reports from Ian Rappaport that there were some teams that were interested. This is coming after the reports that nobody was interested in Justin Fields. And this entire situation, I think, finally coming full circle is the best scenario for everybody involved. You know, if you look at at this timeline, I've been saying since the Bears got the number one pick and Justin Fields, maybe while a lot of us liked what we saw, we seen the potential in him. I don't know if Justin Fields played well enough for a GM who didn't draft him, whose career is on the line, was willing to give him a fifth-year option and then the extension coming up. Not when he had a number one pick for the second straight year. And in this coming draft, the guy that's at number one at QB is one of these can't miss prospects that everybody's been touting for years. It's just, of course, when we're in draft season, the year he's actually eligible to be drafted, that all the nonsense comes out about what's he's a weirdo. He wants this, his father, that physical, this pro day, that when at the end of the day, when you really look at every player that's ever been the number one pick, especially every quarterback that's been the number one pick. There's always been some crazy nonsense, some crazy noise, unbelievable stories, and these outlandish scenarios that keep being reported and put out there. And then literally the day they get drafted, it all goes away because it's football. That's where we're at right now. And if you look at what the Bears, Ryan Poole specifically, has been doing this offseason, bringing in DeAndre Swift, trading for Keenan Allen, Gerald Everett, offensive line help, trying to get that center position right. It was not to bring out the best of Justin Fields. It was to protect the asset that is the number one pick that will become Caleb Williams. Now, if you want to have a conversation that the Bears still might trade down and try to get Jaden Daniels or try to get Drake May or J.J. McCarthy or uh, Michael Penix or Bo Nix, any, any one of these quarterbacks you want to name, right? I could humor that conversation. I still think the Bears, after doing all this and trading specifically Justin Fields, are not going for Jaden Daniels or Drake May. They're doing this for the can't-miss prospect or the one that every scout, every draft expert, every college football observer has been saying is the number one pick at QB. So um, that's where I'm at with how this all has come down to this very moment for Ryan Poles. When you put all that into account, he wasn't going to give up. Drafting that guy. And with having a number nine pick in this same draft, he's going to put a good team around Caleb Williams, around the guy that he's banking his career on, not the guy that the previous GM did. And I think it's also important to acknowledge that, while I do think he meant it when he said they wanted to do right by Justin. It's one of the things I use as a source of saying, listen to Ryan Poles. He's one of the more straight-up GMs in the National Football League. He is going to kind of tell you what he's thinking. So when we heard he wanted to do right by Justin, we knew that he was going to try to do right by Justin the best he can. Now, I ended up working on this situation, and it feels like the Bears probably got fleeced in this deal, but they had to make this move. And 
if Ryan Pohl say, says something, I'm going to put some validity to it, whether or not I'm going to put all my eggs in that basket. No, because he is still going to try to do some misdirection. But he kind of tells you what he's doing, what the plan is. And part of that plan was to make sure that they were in a position not only to develop and put Caleb Williams or whoever they pick at quarterback in the proper position to get the best out of them while they're in this window with that defense and in that rookie deal that they had to move on. It wasn't just about development. You couldn't have Caleb Williams behind Justin Fields developing. First of all, Justin Fields is not Aaron Rodgers. So you can't compare what was going on with Rodgers to Jordan Love to Justin Fields and and Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, whoever. As much as I love Justin, as much as all of us love Justin, it's different. There, it's totally different. And you couldn't have that divide in the locker room. NFL players are adaptable. They'll get used to whoever is that quarterback, whoever's playing next to them, as long as that person does their job. But you couldn't have that distraction that we're going to cause. Media, fans, outside dumb. That is going to impact that team one way or another, whether it's a little bit or a lot. You couldn't afford that. Fresh start. Fresh start for both the Bears and Justin Fields. And I've heard a lot of arguments as we've been hosting sports from the couch and the sports cubicle that the Bears have done Justin Fields dirty. And honestly, I agree. Whether it was what Nat, Nat, Matt Nagy did to him in that Cleveland Browns game, putting him out there, a lamb to the wolves or the very next year that you're tanking or you're at this point where the world is on your shoulders. This team has a number one draft pick and you have to perform. You have to take them to the next level and you get hurt. Did the bears do Justin Fields dirty? Yeah. At some points they did, but I also think it's important to bring this up. Justin Fields didn't do himself any favors. When we're bringing up how the Bears did Justin dirty, that is a factor in all this. That is something we have to bring into this equation. One of those variables that matters in the nuance of talking about this entire situation at Bears QB. But don't for one second ignore that Justin didn't always do his part. I can blame Luke Getze and his play calling. 100% at Matt Nagy and his play calling. But... Great QBs, not good, not okay, not great, amazing at certain things. Uh, Great quarterbacks are bulletproof, are dumb organization proof, are ignorant proof that they overcome all that. Do I think Justin has all the talent to be like that? Absolutely. It's why I picked Pittsburgh months ago to be the landing spot for him because I think Mike Tomlin get the best out of him. And I think playing against killers, killers, In that division from Cleveland, eh, Deshaun, whatever. But you start looking at Joe Burrow and Lamar Jackson and Justin Fields. Yeah, I expect to get the best out of him. I expect the great coach to get the best out of him. But Justin didn't do his part all the time. He didn't hit the receivers he was supposed to. While he can throw 60 yards on a dime, while he will make amazing plays in the pocket, while he will improvise and do things we've never seen before at QB. Doing the things that great QBs do to win Super Bowls, to win divisions, to get a conference championships, to be playoff eligible, to eliminate and secure your job in the last game of the season against your division rival, specifically that game against Green Bay, they do the special thing beyond just what they do great. The stuff that people question, they take to a next level. Did Justin do that all the time? No, not enough to force the hand of the GM to make that decision, to keep him. And I think that's very important to bring up when you're having this conversation about Justin. As much of a fan as we may be, as much potential as we may see, as excited as we may be to see him at Pittsburgh, to be coached under Mike Tomlin, you have to be fair and not ignore that while all the mistakes the Bears did in his development, Justin didn't always carry his weight. So what exactly is next for the Chicago Bears as we break down the huge news? Justin Fields has been traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers for a six-round conditional pick in the 2025 NFL Draft. We're here on the Sports Cubicle. I'm your host, Mike Mercado. And I think what's next 
is you get ready to draft your quarterback for the future. Your quarterback that's going to be under a rookie deal while you have all this talent now on offense and you have all that talent on defense and you're ready to make this next step that you get ready to make your decision at pick number one, which is going to be Caleb Williams. Whoever is picking at number one, it's Caleb Williams. Now, the reason it's going to be the Bears picking at number one is what I've been saying this entire time. Look, and I'm willing to humor the conversation of the Bears trading down for an entire haul and trying to get all these assets and draft capital in this year's draft for the number one pick. But you have to admit, or it's hard for me to make that the favorite in these all these scenarios. Simply, after last year, making that huge trade, trading out of number one when there was Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud. And then the following year, you have the number one pick again, have a prospect that was way more can't miss, way more touted, and Caleb Williams and the other two quarterbacks in last year's draft, who's now right there for you to pick. You don't have to do anything. Right there for you to pick. Then you also have a number nine pick in that same draft and a very top-heavy draft. Also, putting into the entire equation, you just traded a very young, dynamic, full of potential young QB. That is why the Bears aren't making a draft day trade at number one. Because if they do, and they get this magical haul everybody's talking about, but they don't come back into training camp that summer, go into the NFL season in September, and are competitive in the NFC North, do you think Ryan Poles is going to have a job? Do you think Ryan Poles' job is that secure? After keeping Matt Eberflus, after making all these trades, after making all these decisions, and missing? It's one thing to miss at the can't miss guy. So the other thing to miss at the guy you reach for or you guessed at is Ryan Poles going to do that? No, because job security also matters to this man, matters to everybody. So with that in mind, while also understanding the mindset of they want to trade down, get a haul, regardless, they're going to pick a quarterback in this year's draft. And if that's the case, they have gone at this as best as they can. While I would have, when it happened, seeing the Bears get one of these big-time offensive coordinator, potential head coaches, or somebody like Mike Tomlin to lead these Chicago Bears into the future with Caleb Williams and to see how that would have played out, sure. But as constructed with Matt Eberflus as the head coach, which is no guarantee he will be next year, but you bring in somebody like Shane Waldron who had an offense last year that found a way to get the ball to Jackson Smith and Jimba and to Tyler Lockett and to DK Metcalf while also having a really good running back game. And Geno Smith was their quarterback. Like, to see that and give him that little bit of benefit of the doubt, while I don't entrust in him in anything and I'm not going to crown him like we've done before in Chicago, to see that and to see these moves where you're adding to DJ Moore and Cole Komet with Gerald Everett, DeAndre Swift, with obviously uh, Keenan Allen, and you already have uh, Khalil Herbert and Roshan Johnson and you look at what you're having on the offensive line kind of growing together and you're bringing in guys who were coached under Sean McVay and playing up in Buffalo and obviously a defense that's stacked top five defense this is the best scenario for a young rookie quarterback to come in this is not a rookie quarterback that's going to come into a team that's going to only win one game two games that's a bottom dweller in the NFL a young QB is coming into a scenario with a lot of hype, a lot of pressure, but a solid foundation for an organization that really can never say that, or at least at this point of an offseason or in a rebuild or where things are being kind of questioned, that they're here. There's a lot to like about the Chicago Bears team on paper, but they got to land this QB right. They got to land this pick right. And that's why I think the simplest the answer to the hardest question is the simplest answer, and it's the guy who's been projected to be number one for years is going to be picked at number one, and that's Caleb Williams. And they have done their best to surround him with as much talent as he learns in his rookie deal. And if he's the real deal, becoming a pro under the tutelage, under the learning tree of guys like DJ Moore and Keenan Allen? Are you kidding me? to be the guy in the next 10 years for the next group of young receivers, that's not even including what the Bears do at number nine. What if they get one of these studs, one of these young kids at a wide receiver that flourishes into these super studs? 
they're learning under this tree. So it, I think this is one of those rare occasions while a lot of emotions, rightfully some sadness seeing Justin Fields go, to see him go to an organization that's going to do right by him, whatever you may think that is. We know he's going to develop. And if he's the truth like a lot of us believed he was, he will shine in Pittsburgh. And the Bears have put themselves and their future QB in the best potential route, in the best position to grow as an organization. I think it's okay to feel your feelings, man, as a sports fan, however you're feeling. But on April 25th, the Chicago Bears will begin a new era. And to see this new era being built the way it is, very strategically, very cynically, very clinically, I kind of like it because you have to be this way when you're making this big decision because this is the biggest decision in the franchise's history, especially with everything that's going on with New Soldier Field. They need to get this right for the future of the Bears. But we're going to be here for it, and it's going to be an exciting time all the way until we get to draft day April 25th. We want to know your thoughts. What do you think about this huge trade? Justin Fields is heading to the Pittsburgh Steelers for a 2025 six-round conditional pick that may become a fifth-round pick. Is it all but confirmed now that Caleb Williams will be the number one draft pick for the Chicago Bears? Or do you still believe there's a chance the Bears trade down, try to get a haul, but still make a pick at QB? We want to know your thoughts. We're on Twitter at SportsCubicle TV. Make sure you look us up wherever you get your favorite podcast on all of your favorite podcast platforms at Sports from the Couch. We're on YouTube at the Sports Cubicle. We got more coming up next here on the Sports Cubicle. I'm Mike Mercado.